Hello and welcome back to another script tutorial from Blender Ignite. My name is Ryan Grizziak and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you the health setup. Let me show you how this works. So when I push play you will see that up in the top right corner we have the health bar setup and it has a number and a health bar underneath and this is very very exciting because I've looked out for it for a long time. Now, you may be saying, hey, it's not too hard to actually set up a health bar. You could come over here, add a game property, call it, say, health, you know, maybe give it an integer, go into the actuator property, and just give that health a negative one every time you are hit. And that would work. You know, say you set that to a number, and it would work but the issue is that it is not visual so when you would play the game you would see absolutely nothing and that is what happened to me quite a lot so I would be running through the game you know the health would be in place I would be getting shot at and then boom game would end so the thing about this script is that it is reading those values and putting it on the screen for you as a player to be less scared, less nervous when you are in the game. And that for me helped because I was no longer stressed about not knowing the number, I could see the number and be stressed. And so it helped me as a stressful person to be able to handle that. Let us jump in and see how this works. So when I push play, you will see that the health comes up. Now, how do we subtract it? I am sending a message to the health setup and so as I subtract this, you'll see that the numbers and the health bar change at the same time. And that is really cool. You can also see an exciting feature I added onto this health bar that as the closer you get to zero, the darker red it gets until your demise. That works very cool. You will see up here, I have debug properties. You can see the health, which is the number and the health bar. So it's reading the variable on that health bar showing you that it is indeed four. And for the time, we have 43 seconds. What is the time and why is it useful? Well, I've installed a exciting feature into the script. Now this feature is called auto healing and Auto healing was one of the main reasons why I wrote this script. Let's go see that. Now in the overlay scene, which is overlaying from the camera, I have the health setup. So you can see the health text, which is replaced by the number and the health bar. Now under the health, you will see that they're both linked together so you can move them around. Under the health, you will see that it has a list of properties. We have the health. So this is how much the amount of the health that you are using. These three variables down here, auto heal, time length, and time heal are what the health system uses to calculate the auto heal. So for this auto heal button, it's a Boolean and I'm just gonna turn that on so we can jump in to the scene and see how this works. So when I push play, the 100 comes up and I can de-increment the values down and when you wait a second, it will auto heal back up. So that way, when you are in the game, you can, instead of using health, use an auto healing system, such as Halo or Crisis. So that works very well. Under the health system, you have two variables, time length and time heal. Now, time length is the number of seconds before the auto heal kicks in. So you can raise this to say two seconds or say three, and this will mean that your player will wait three seconds before it kicks in the auto healing system. And how fast does the auto system work? Well, that is done by the time heal. So you can turn this down to say one, and it will do one auto heal every frame. Let's give it a look. You will see that when we come into the scene and we push play, you will see that I can, you know, de-increment again using this. You can see the time, one, two, three, and it will begin to add the number 
about one a second. And you can see that calculating here in the timer. So once the time reaches about a second, it will increment the values here. This is very cool because you can decide how fast it will heal and when it will heal as well. What else do we have? Well, the auto heal system is directly related to the message that it is getting. In this situation on this blue brick, I have a left button set up to send a health of negative 12. So I could increment this to a bigger value. So you can see here that we have the number 30 and this will determine how big the chunks are when we are in the game. So when we click play, you will see that 30 chunks are taken off when I click. And so when you stop, it will auto heal. Now, you probably have noticed already, but the cool feature of this healing system is that it is set up to deactivate when you are under attack. So that time when it's re-auto healing, if you are attacked within that or attacked when it's auto healing like this, it will stop and it will have to wait till the time reaches that seconds, um, the time length before it then recommences and begins to count up. And so this can be very useful, say, if you are in an attack, um, it will not auto heal when you're being attacked and throw off the whole system. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the health system. In the next part of this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to actually set this up in your game. All right, this is the second part of this tutorial where I'm going to take you through how to set this up in a scene. So here we have the blank scene, just with some objects, lights, like in the previous example, and all there is is a camera, and I'm gonna show you how to set this up. So before we continue any further, so the health script system is an overlay scene within Blender, and an overlay scene is a scene which sits over the top of your camera, so it sits in front of it, and wherever the camera moves, the overlay scene is right in front of it. So that way you can have text, you can have menu bars and everything on your camera, and it won't be affected by anything else in the scene. So to do this, we need to actually set up a new scene. So if you come over here where the plus sign is, up by the scene name, you can just add a new one. I'm just gonna copy the settings from the previous scene. So now we have the blank scene and I'm going to add a camera. So if I come down here, just add a camera, zoom in, Alt R will clear the rotation and just point the camera down. And this is going to be really useful because the camera is what's going to be used to point Blender in which items are going to be used in that overlay scene. So if I take this camera and just move it up here, I'm going to actually affect the settings on this camera. So if you come under here, under the camera settings panel, you'll see that under the lenses you have perspective and orthographic. Now perspective mode is what all the normal cameras use and it will bend objects um, determined by your focal length. So orthographic will make sure everything is straight and flat. And this is really good for text and things you just want on your scene. It's also really useful because it actually doesn't affect the actual scale of the object. So when we import that health script, it will appear exactly where it is on the camera in the other scene. It's a little confusing, but let me just show you how that works. So if you go into file, you can come down here to append. We're going to append the health group from the health blender file. So I'm going to select the blender file that is downloaded from the internet, from Blender Ignite. You can just click on the link below this video and you will see that it will take you straight to the website. You can then download it from there and jump right into it. So if you come down to group here, you will see that there is the health group. So if you just link and append that, you'll see that it appears over here by the camera. And if we just go into camera mode, you'll see that it appears in the exact spot. Now the cool thing about this camera is it really doesn't matter how high you put this because you can select the camera, move it up and come back in. It appears exactly in the same spot. So the only way to do that is to really grab this and scale it if you want it smaller. 
or to just push G and just move it around your scene. So that is really cool. It imports the whole shebang. So we got the health bar with all the, um, the color and the scale added to that. You have the health, which is set up with all the properties from the actual script. So you have the health, you have the time, you have the auto heal, and if we just move this over, you can see the time length and the time heal. So that is really useful when we add the script. And so that is the only thing that we have left to do is import that script. So if we go under text, open text block, we can just navigate to the Blender health script. So now that it's in, you'll see that the instructions are up at the top again, and you'll see that all the way down here is the script. So to set this up, it is pretty much done. So if we push play, you'll see that the number appears instead of health, you'll see that the bar appears and that is basically everything there is in setting this up. So now we just need to name this scene. I'm gonna call it overlay so that we know what it is when we go into the other scene. And for navigation, I found it really easy to pull up the all scenes here, over here, and to just be able to select whatever scene you're in. And that way it helps navigate between them very quickly. So now that we have the overlay scene completed, we now have to pull it over the camera. So to do that, we will click on the camera. We will come down and go always and add actuator. We're gonna come up to scene and we're going to, instead of restart, add overlay scene button. And we'll just click the overlay scene, connect them together and we are done. Now that we got this set up, let's just have a play and see what happens. So we push play see that text comes up, the bar, you'll see that the timer property is up here, everything is working just great. Now we just need to add an action or a message to subtract or add items to that script. So if we come under here to this blue block here, I'll just add sensor, I'll just create that action, which is the mouse left button, I'm gonna send a message to that health so I know that this is the health, so I'm just gonna select it from here, and I'm just gonna type in the exact same as the object, so health, capital H, and under the body, just put negative, say, 23, and that will be what is subtracted from the health bar. So when we come in, you'll see that it says 100. Click a few times, you'll see that now it's at 31. There is no auto heal turned on, so it's just subtracting it, and if we were to, say, come under here and add another mouse sensor, maybe the right button, and add another message. So health, health, and maybe let's just say plus 10. We can then, say, have health packs, which would then send health to that system. So if I come under here again, so you can see I can take it off and add health back if I use the right mouse, subtract if I use the left mouse. So that gives you a lot of flexibility within this health script. If you do want auto heal, you can come up here to the scene, switch to overlay scene, or you can just select the overlay scene here, come under auto heal, turn it on, and you are ready to go. So when we can come under this scene, we'll see when we push play, we can subtract from here, and it will add that up depending on your time length, and time um, speed. So that is very exciting. It all works great. Now let's say that you just want to say end your scene when you hit zero because that is the end of your health. So to do this, we can just maybe the scene overlay and this health property here. So I'm gonna come under to add sensor. I'm going to add a property sensor going to add the health value of zero and come under actuator and select game and we're just going to quit this game when it does reach zero. So if we come under the scene, push play and we come down here, you can see that we auto heal, kill it again, ends the game. So this is pretty much it for the health script. Now one more thing you may want to do when you're in the overlay scene you can see that under the 
um, the health bar, you will see that under here, under the action, that it's being controlled by this health bar number. So that means that if you make this number higher, the actual health bar is now 213. Because it's reading that property, the length of this needs to be 213. So if we come on over to the dope sheet um, action editor, we can then push A, B, select all these keyframes. So this will need to be 200 and say uh, 13 and select these, push G. I can just pull them over here and you will then see when we switch over to the scene and push play, you'll see that it is the whole health script and now has the full length, which means you now have more points, can add more points, take away, and will all be added to this scene. So that is really exciting. It all works exactly as you would expect. I sure hope this health script is really helpful for you. I hope you can use it in your games. I've been really excited about this. I hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching this tutorial from Blender Ignite. My name is Ryan Grizia, and I'll see you next time.